<laughs> How do I look? Fine. Fine. I look fine. You How's do. the hair? It's crooked. It's crooked? There you go. That's better. Who's the guest tonight? Tandy Newton. Tandy Newton. Tandy, see, we got the. I got Juice Newton. This is Sir Isaac Newton. I got Newton, comma, fig. There you go. Tandy Newton, I'm all set. Jim, how are we looking? Uh, we're still getting the satellite in, just need another 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Okay. Uh, I'll take a nap. <sighs> this sort of thing never happened back at the Ed Sullivan Theater. God, I wish I was there again. Stephen sleeping or is he awake? And it's all existence just a collective hallucination to deceive us about the true nature of reality. Plus, Stephen welcomes Tandy Newton and Ina Garten with a special appearance by John Mulaney featuring John Baptiste and Stay Human. And now, live from his own subconscious, it's Stephen Cole. To the Late Show, I am your host, Stephen Colbert. And hold on a second. There you go. Folks, as you can see, I'm coming to you once again from the beautiful Ed Sullivan Theater here in Midtown Manhattan. And I can do this because today, May 1st, the federal stay-at-home order has been lifted. And since we on TV are governed by the Federal Communications Commission, I'm pretty sure that's Ali Ali Oxen Free. Of course, I'm playing it safe by being a cartoon, which is the ultimate mask. And I'm so happy to be able to say this and see this man in person. Please say hello to the great John Baptiste, everybody. John, good to see you. Great to see you too, Stephen. How do I sound? You sound fantastic. You look a little flat, but you sound amazing. I'm so happy to be back here. Ever since the lockdown, I've been dreaming about doing the show here at the Ed Sullivan. Wait a minute. Maybe this is just a dream. Hold on, let me check. Nope, not waking up. This must be real life. It's real, Steven. And I'm staying human. Ooh, that's some smoking squid right there. Moving on to something slightly more cartoonish, Donald Trump. Trump's poll numbers have been going right down the tweeting throne because he so fragrantly shanked the response to the coronavirus. For example, his series of disastrous press conferences in which he suggested, among other things, that people somehow put bleach into their bodies. Okay, let's, uh, let's give that a try. Okay, that's a little too much. Let's fix that. There you go. So to continue his perfect record for never taking responsibility for anything, Trump has started a public campaign to blame China for the pandemic. I want to see the virus's long-form birth certificate. I have a feeling it's from China, which many are calling the Kenya of Asia. Specifically, Trump has pressured the intelligence community for evidence to support an unsubstantiated theory that a government laboratory in Wuhan was the origin of the coronavirus outbreak. I've seen that theory, too, from my source on the Internet, who assures me, Oh, my God, coronavirus came from Wuhan. But yesterday, the director of national intelligence released a statement saying the intelligence community concurs with the wide scientific consensus that the COVID-19 virus was not man-made or genetically modified. Oh, not genetically modified. So it's better for you than corn? Scientific consensus is that COVID-19 began as a bat virus. No word yet on how it spread to humans, but scientists think the likely culprit was this man. I had sex with a bat, upside down, 
It was pretty hot. Yesterday, Trump said he believed the Wuhan lab conspiracy theory, and then reporters pressed him on why he believed that. My question is, have you seen anything at this point that gives you a high degree of confidence that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was the origin of this virus? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Yes, he has. Trump looked at the virus under a microscope and saw it was clearly made in China. The reporter pressed him further. What gives you a high degree of confidence that this originated from the Wuhan Institute of Virology? I can't tell you that. I'm not allowed to tell you that. I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. Probably with the virus I'm not taking seriously. And what do you mean you're not allowed to? You're the president. Anything you say is instantly declassified. Look, I'd love to tell you, but my boss would kill me. Again, with the virus I'm not taking seriously. Trump made these comments at an event about protecting seniors, a group he's not sure he belongs to. This afternoon, I'll sign a proclamation declaring the month of May to be Older Americans Month. I don't know if I'm in that category. I have a feeling I am, but I feel good. I'm pretty sure being confused about whether you belong in the Older Americans category means you belong in the older Americans category. Trump also weighed in on the character of his old pal, General Michael Flynn. I think he's a fine man. I think he's got a great family. He loves his son. I will tell you, his son was around a lot, and he loves his son, as people generally do. People generally love their sons, but, of course, there's an Eric to every rule. Trump desperately misses his rallies. So on Sunday, he's planning what he hopes is the next best thing, a two-hour event on emerging from the coronavirus pandemic live from the Lincoln Memorial. I can't think of anything more appropriate than to stand in front of Abraham Lincoln and say, let the states do whatever they want. It's up to them. The planners say they picked the Lincoln Memorial because they wanted a powerful image of American strength and the idea of what reopening looks like. And that's why we're doing it in front of a man frozen in stone, indoors, sitting in a chair for all eternity. Now, during the pandemic, we haven't heard a lot from presumptive Democratic nominee and national tooth reserve Joe Biden. Up till now, Biden has been especially silent when it comes to the allegations of sexual assault made by his former staffer, Tara Reid. Early last year, Reid told the Associated Press that when she worked for Biden in 1993, he rubbed her shoulders and neck and played with her hair. Now, that would be wrong even if he were her hairdresser, unless he worked at super uncomfortable cuts. But on a recent podcast, Reid took the allegations much further, alleging that while delivering a gym bag to Biden in a congressional office building, he uh, did something really bad. Something I'm not allowed to say on CBS. Uh, how do I do this? A uh, little help, please? Grab him by the pussy? Yes, what he said. And did. Parts of Reed's story have been corroborated by her brother, a former co-worker, and a former neighbor, who all said she told them about it at the time. And a newly resurfaced video from 1993 appears to show Reed's mother calling into Larry King Live to seek advice around the time of the alleged assault. Wow, you know it's a rough era for women when their best option for help was calling Larry King. It was either that, the Butterball Hotline, or being caller number 10 on WYYY in the morning with Wally and the Snooch. What's the phrase that makes abusers pay? Ha <laughs> ha, trick question, there isn't one. I don't want to work. I just want to bang on the drum all diggity, 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 diggity. Well, today... The former vice president finally addressed the charges with Coffee Joe and the Brew Crew, and Mika Morning drove straight at it. Would you please go on the record with the American people? Did you sexually assault Tara Reid? No, it is not true. I'm saying unequivocally, it never, never happened. And it didn't. It never happened. There it is. Complete denial. And furthermore, he doesn't remember her complaining about him. I don't remember any type of complaint she <clears throat> may have made. It was 27 years ago, and uh, I don't remember, nor does anyone else that I'm aware of. And uh, the fact is that I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember any complaint ever having been made. So he doesn't remember anything, though 
Research does show there is memory loss associated with decades of huffing hair. Now, Mika pushed Biden, asking if he could promise her that he never had a sexual assault complaint and he did not hesitate to equivocate. I am absolutely positive that no one that I'm aware of ever has been made aware of any complaint, a formal complaint made by or a complaint by Tara Reid against me at the time this allegedly happened 27 years ago or until the, I announced for, pre well, it was, I guess it was in April or May of this year. I know of no one who's aware that any complaint was made. That's a lot of qualifications. Look, look, I'm not aware that I'm aware of anybody being aware of any persons knowing that anyone was aware of a complaint to my awareness. Listen, Jack, I don't care where you're aware as long as you're not a werewolf. What's the question? Trump was asked about the Biden case yesterday, and he was unhelpfully sympathetic. You know, it's, uh, it could be false accusations. I know all about false accusations. I've been falsely charged numerous times. Look, I'll make Joe a deal. I'll say he was falsely accused this one time as long as he agrees that I was falsely accused 21 times. Tell you what, let me sweeten the deal. Even if he loses in November, I promise to make Joe a Supreme Court justice. Nobody tell him what boofing is. Like many of these cases, it's hard to know exactly what happened after so many years. And a lot of people have compared this to accusations of Christine Blasey Ford against Brett Kavanaugh. And that's legitimate. And while both accusations should be taken seriously, there is at least one difference. A nominee to the Supreme Court goes through a process of investigation by the FBI, then confirmation by the Senate, and then the senator's judge. But for the presidency, there's only you, the voters. You're the jury. And you are ready to be a jury because you're already sequestered. We've got a great show for you tonight. From HBO's Westworld, Tandy Newton is here. But when we return, definitive proof that Donald Trump watches my show. Hi, Mr. President. Hi.